I have a question for you. What's the common thread between the person who crosses the finish line, the one that finishes the book, completes the song, the person that opens their heart? It's inspiration. Now, I want to talk about inspiration on the human-to-human -human level, because I'm interested in working with people. You know, I'm a trainer by trade, and in my work, I wear a lot of different hats. I start out as the like trainer mentor guy, the you can do it guy. Then I move into the drill sergeant, you better do it guy. And then I go all the way to the therapist. It's like, are you okay? So it kind of happens in that order. It's interesting. I also get called a lot of things, most of which I can't repeat. I'll say this, one, one starts with an A and ends with a hole. And it's usually after a really tough session. Um, but I also get embraced with some really sweaty hugs. Yep, and thanked, and I get called an inspiration. That's a tough one for me. So I started in a small gym in Texas, and this was before the obesity epidemic. And when I was working with people, it was very much the external side of fitness. It was the last 10 pounds, it was all about vanity, and I absolutely, I hated it. It, it was not what I wanted to do. So uh, I decided to specialize, and I started working with people that really needed it. I specialize in bariatrics, helping people lose a significant amount of weight. And it wasn't about the weight. It was about people getting out the front door and going for a walk, engaging in life, being better parents, feeling good. That was the goal. And my work was incredible. I loved it. I loved my early days. I had purpose. I had a big purpose with my work. Ever since then, I've got to work on some, uh, some really exciting platforms. I've worked in TV. I did a show called Diet Tribe. Uh, in the States. I also did the U.S. Biggest Loser and um, the U.K. A Year to Save My Life. And they were all incredible experiences. The people I worked with, they, they inspired me. And I was trying to think about, you know, when I was asked to do this talk, what is at the core of my work? And, you know, as a trainer, you think, okay, willpower? You know, everybody's got to have willpower. But no, that, that's not uh, abstract enough. Is it strength? There's strength of will. There's physical strength. That's important, but no, still too predictable. Then I thought motivation. And motivation is definitely something that I get asked about a lot. How can I get motivated? How can I stay motivated? But I think a step further than motivation even is, is, is inspiration. And that's at the core of my work. Inspiration, the pull, the light, the thing that just pulls you towards it. And that's what I'm talking about today. Now, when you look at the science behind inspiration, what happens in the brain, you have the serotonin, the dopamine release. And that creates the experience that lifts you and creates euphoria, and, uh, and it inspires you, right? Just because of those chemicals. But I think there's more exciting things to talk about here. You know, inspiration, it's when we're not trying to become inspired that we are inspired. So the brain can't consciously think up inspiration. So there has to be an emotional connection. You have to be open to it. And when thinking about the people that I've worked with, vulnerability is at its core. You know, a person in a vulnerable state or position is both able to be inspired and become an inspiration. Again, a person in a vulnerable state or position can both be inspired and become an inspiration. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about here. Now, I worked with a woman named Sarah. Now, Sarah, she came into my life, and usually when I'm working with someone, it's around weight loss or it's about, you know, really overcoming an obstacle. Now, Sarah on paper looked absolutely amazing. She had the house, the car, the dog, the husband, in that order. Ladies, you know what I'm talking about. And when I work with someone, I, I'm a bit of a, a creepy stalker, not like a, a stalker that, like, looks in the window and peeks in, but I want to know exactly what's happening when you wake up in the morning, what you're eating, how you feel throughout the day, and what happens when you go to bed. That kind of stalker, not as creepy. And so I went into Sarah's world, and I walked in the door, I looked around, I looked in the pantry, it looked good, I looked in the refrigerator, it looked good. I looked at her life in general, it all looked really put together. So I was like, what's the catch here? So I set Sarah down right in front of me, and I said, all right, Sarah, tell me what's going on. She said, I just wanna lose some weight. I was like, okay, what's going on? I just want to lose some weight. Okay, so I'm, I've got to get clever here. What am I going to do? So I look around and I find a full-length mirror. 
I'm thinking constructive tension, constructive tension. I sit down, I peek outside of the mirror, and I go, okay, I'm like the creepy stalker guy. Peek outside of the mirror, and I say, tell me what you see, Sarah. Tell me what you see. Sarah falls apart. She falls apart. And she says, I hate myself. Nobody wants to hear somebody say that. What happens next, right? For me as a trainer, though, that's an exciting point. Because I know in that moment when Sarah allowed herself to be seen, that changes are about to start happening. Sarah went from that moment of being vulnerable to a few months later completing an Olympic distance triathlon. Sarah allowed herself to be vulnerable, so she was inspired, and then she became an inspiration. It's exactly what I'm talking about. Now, over the past year, I've been working with tech giant Cisco Systems, and Cisco's an amazing company. They create cutting-edge technology, but what makes them so great, and they understand this, is the people give them that edge. The people make them cutting-edge, so they want to take care of their people, and I've been brought in to create a 1% shift in the corporate culture around well-being, to get people to start thinking about themselves throughout the day. So I'm working with a team at Cisco right now, and, and I just met them a few months ago, and when I walked in the room, I put the, the chairs in a horseshoe position. I'm sitting in the middle of the team leaders next to me, and I'm thinking, okay, let's get to know each other. All right, guys, how's it going? I get the surface. Oh, it's good, it's good, it's good. How's it going? It's fine. So what I had them do, I said, all right, who's willing to share a story where they achieve something, a story of greatness, or a story where, there, where there's some struggle involved? I sat down, and this little sweet hand goes up and says, oh, I'll share my story. And this woman, this sweet voice, she told this story that, that had people leaning in and listening. Tears started falling down people's faces. This is in the corporate world. And all of a sudden, people started to open up. Another hand went up. They shared a story. Another hand, they shared a story. Everybody talked about something that they had achieved, something that was a challenge in their life. And in that moment, everybody allowed themselves to be seen. They were vulnerable. That created a deeper connection and that deep connection created compassion, and a compassion, compassionate environment thrives. And that's needed in the corporate world, and Cisco understands that. Now, I think one of the best ways that we learn is through our own experiences. And I want to tell you a story about a person who has slowly become my hero and my inspiration. It's about... First days of school, change, courage. It's about my son. Now, my son had a heck of a year last year. He, um, he had to deal with a lot. His parents split up. He moved cities. He went to a new school. And he was confused. He was very confused. And I could tell. We'd be driving down the road, and he would just be staring, and he, there was nothing there. And I was like, ah, oh, this guy's going through something. I could tell him, something's up with my son. But that wasn't the hard part. The hard part was drop, dropping him off at school. I'd take him to school. I'd give him a hug, and he would grip onto me. He would grip on, and he wouldn't let go, and he would just cry. The tears would come out. The, the teacher would have to come out and pull him, pull him off of me. And it was heartbreaking, and it looked wrong. The teacher would drag him into the room, and I didn't know what to do. This happened every single day like clockwork. And the coach in me just wanted to be like, okay, all right, buddy, your mom and dad, we love you. You're safe. You're taken care of. You can do this. But every day, the same thing would happen. He would fall apart. He would break down. This happened for weeks. And then finally, we got to the point where it's like, okay, we're going to have to get a therapist involved here. This is bad. But one day, I woke him up. We did our routine, got him his breakfast, drove to school. We put Michael Jackson on. Michael Jackson was hoping that would lift the mood. It didn't. <laughs> we get to the school, and I'm preparing myself for another breakdown and a little bit of heartbreak. I walk him to the class. I get down, and I say, all right, buddy. Your mom and dad, we love you, and you're safe. You're taken care of. You can do this, and I'll see you after school. He walks up to me. He gives me his hug, and I feel him. He's about to fall apart. But instead, he turns, and he walks to the doorway. And he's standing there, and he's looking at the monsters and the goblins that are about to take him from his dad. And he takes a deep breath in. 
And he walks into the class slowly. He sits down and he waves. Now, I'm the one crying because (laughs) I'm like, wait a minute, this is your cue. You're supposed to like cry and fall apart. And it was really funny. What I realized was my son inspires me. He can be my hero just as much as I can be his. You know, inspiration is all around us. It's in the people we wake up next to. It's in the ones we kiss goodnight, the ones we take to school, the people we pass on the street, in the hallway at work, the ones we sit next to at work. My hope for you is that you find inspiration in the unremarkable. Inspiration is waiting for you to be open enough to receive it, just like love. I want to thank you for being my inspiration, and I want to thank you for listening. Thank you very much.